What's your name? My name is Tori Sutherland. Where is your birthplace? My birthplace is in at the, I was born at the Hearst Hospital here and or Hearst Hospital. That's where I was born. Where's your home? My home here is Constance Lake First Nation. Who's who's your family members? My family members are my parents. My dad is Edgar Sutherland Sr. And my mom's name is Pearl Sutherland. And my co-coms are Elizabeth Sutherland and Margaret Paris. And my co-motions are John Sutherland and Joseph Paris. And I have two brothers, Norman Sr. and Edgar Jr. And I have four sisters, my late my youngest late Veronica Sutherland passed away. So I have Sarah, Maria, and Joyce. My family members. Um, what's your personal story from your experience in the community? My personal story here is uh, my father and my co my father and my grandparents. My father is the one that uh, taught me about uh, trapping, how to survive, and I went with him a lot of times, trapping, and one time he told us, um, I, I said, I'm teaching you guys now, so you know how to uh, go in the bush without me, he said, sometimes I'm not feeling well. So he taught us how to uh, open the traps, set it up, and take the animal out, so that's what he, that's what he did with us. So myself and my youngest brother went out sometimes without him because he was sick. That's what he taught us. And my co-com, Elizabeth, is the one that taught me a lot of stuff. Getting on the, how to get on the canoe, how to get off the canoe, and go paddling. And fishnet, she taught me how to do that. She taught me how to snare, how to skin, how to scale a, a, a fish, how to cut it, how to fry it. She taught me lots of stuff, my, my Kokum, and I'm very happy for that. And my mother is the one that I, uh, I admire most because um, she taught me how to, you know, clean house, how to keep clean, how to uh, look after my siblings, and on and um, Plus, uh, I have taught, I do help a lot in the community. I volunteer a lot. And um, and I'm still doing that. So, and I teach here. I've been teaching for geez over 20 years in that old day school there, Indian day school, and then here. So, I love my job. I love what I do. Um, what is important for the community? What is important for the community? More businesses, like for the youth, like you guys. Uh, <clears throat> to continue your education, get into business, and um, to have more um, awareness about uh, what's happening in our community. Let's say, um, we, we're, like right now, we have problems on uh, drugs and alcohol. We can have more awareness on that, teach that, and the importance of it. You know, to look after ourselves, to look after our siblings, and all that. That's the importance of our community. Plus, to be safe, keep our community safe. And uh, when we see uh, someone in uh, in a situation that they need help, then we step in and ask if they need help or not. Be good. What advice can you give youth today regarding education and preserving culture at the same time? Okay. Um, <clears throat> when I was uh, when I was going to school here at the that Indian Day School, um, I learned a few stuff, but not everything. And I went to Hearst. So at the, at the age of ten, not ten, grade ten, I sort of um, left school, leave school to go to work in Thunder Bay, and then uh, I came back back home. To come and uh, look for jobs, look for employment. And I work here at the school after as a native language teacher. I taught Creda. Then uh, I wanted to go to school in uh, Lakehead University, or any university, but uh, 
all I heard was um, negative, negative stuff like, uh, Flory, you won't be able to do it. Flory, you can't do it. It's too hard. University is going to be too hard. You're going to come home. You're going to get lonely. That's all I heard. So I told myself, uh, well, Flory, let's give it a try. So I went. I went and registered. So I went and registered. I got it. I got in at Lakehead University. And I graduated with Bachelor's of Education, Bachelor's of Arts. So because of, I wanted to be, I wanted to be positive for myself, for my community to come back here and teach. And uh, for preserving culture at the same time with education, it's uh, knowing who you are, knowing myself, who I was at that time. I didn't know at that time because I was still searching. And my father, when I was at university, I called home. I told my dad, I'm looking, I'm searching for my family tree. And my dad, that's when my dad told me, did you know our last names is not Sutherland? It's, uh, we have a different name. It was changed because of treaties, you know, when they signed treaties, government went around signing treaties. Yeah. Um, they changed our names because they couldn't say our names. There was a Hudson Bay company in Mamatawa. Even when you guys, we take go to Mamatawa trips. There was a Hudson Bay manager there, and his last name was Sutherland. And the government took that last name, gave it to us, Sutherland. Same thing as Solomon's, Wesley, and all that. Anyway, um, when I told my dad that, he said, um, he told me that uh, Sutherland's not our last name. So I said, oh. He said, okay, I said, I told my dad, okay, I'm going to search that. So I did, I searched for, I, they, they told me to go get a hold of a long, uh, a guy named, in, uh, used to be a professor, but he passed away now in North Bay, Nipissing. And I did contact him, and he sent me six pages of my family tree, starting way back in 1800s. And... That's why I said my last name is Nastutaway. I still got to find out all what that means. But for me, I started learning about my culture after that. I started going to ceremonies. I started asking questions because I found out my grandparents, Elizabeth and John Sutherland, they're traditional healers. They're, I didn't know that because when I lived with them, they were telling me, uh, Flory, uh, I need you. They were talking to me in Cree because I had to learn Cree really fast because my motion, that's all he talked was Cree. So when I lived, lived with them, they told me, Flory, you need to go stay with your parents because um, Kokum and I are going to go somewhere. We're wanted somewhere. And I didn't ask questions. And when I told my mom that, then that's when I found out that there were traditional healers they're called to another community. They, their people are sick. And that's what they did. Because uh, one time I got really sick. I missed school for two weeks. And my kokum, my kokum looked at me and said, Flory, come here. He said, come here. You come stay with me. OK, I said. So I lay down there in the bed. I was not feeling well. And I see my kokum every now and then in the kitchen. She was doing something, fixing something. And it was medicine. And then that's, I took that medicine and I got better in two days compared to two weeks. And I stayed home for another day just to regain my strength. And then I went back to school. So when I found out <clears throat> about my background, then I started following that path of the uh, cultural and traditional ways. So I'm still learning. I, I receive a lot of good teachings from teachers. And um, so I learn every day as I go along. So what I say to the youth, for you guys, is that to continue your education. Even though somebody says you can't do it, don't listen to it. Just move forward. Do what you have to do, okay? For right. yourselves and for your, you know, for your community. Bring it back here. Okay? Miigwech. Right. Miigwech.